have a roll call, please. Trustee D'Ambrosia. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee Mosep. Here. Trustee Petchikoff. Here. Trustee Thorpe. Here. Trustee Watts. Here. Chair Berry. Here. Uh, before we move forward, uh, last week we had our organizational meeting uh, and uh, we elected new officers. Uh, so I'll be serving as your chair this year. Uh, our vice chair is uh, Trustee Petchikoff. Our secretary will be Trustee Watts. And our treasurer will be Pat D'Ambrosio. Thank you, everybody. Next uh, item, please. Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes for the following Board of Trustees meeting. The regular Board of Trustees meeting, December 11th, 2023. Board of Trustees Policy Committee meeting, December 11th, 2023. Recommended action. Make any necessary corrections and move to approve, approve these minutes. So moved. Support. So we have a motion moved by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Petrikoff. Uh, are there any questions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, uh, are there any objections to the motion? Also hearing none, please attach a unanimous vote in the affirmative. Thank you. Next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgments. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have somewhat of a different plan with recognition and acknowledgments. I have asked one of our students, Hadi Swyden, to come and make a presentation to you on what I think you'll find is an exciting uh, bit of success. You know, there's another small higher ed institution that won a very big championship recently, but uh, I think this I think this is actually more impressive. Uh, so, Hadi, are you? He's here. There he okay, is. and now I have to tell you, this young man um, has a great presentation for you and a lot of fans. This is because I told you he's comparable to that team in Ann Arbor. Um, uh, but he also has class tonight at, uh, at 730, a math class, which is a good segue to what he's going to talk to you about. So um, you won't be surprised if he talks quickly. So Hadi, welcome to the Board of Trustees, and we're all excited to hear from you. Uh, we know you have a PowerPoint, and we know you also have what looks to be a legion of fans. So uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if, you have, if they haven't mentioned it already, my name is Hadi Swayden, the president of the Henry Ford Mathematics, Mathematics Club. Now, you may be wondering what the AMAG Student Math League is. The American Mathematical, uh, the American Mathematical Association of Tier Colleges Student Math League is a national competition for two-year colleges to prove their students' skill in applying mathematics to a variety of different problems. <coughs> the competition is in an exam format with one hour to solve 20 questions, and the top five scorers go on to represent the college on the national leaderboards. These questions, however, are extremely tricky and require great out-of-the-box thinking to solve quickly, let alone solve at all. HFC has been participating in this competition for a while now. It started off long ago with Professor Zadzali and his past team, but due to COVID, there was a period of inactivity until 2021 when Professor Nsin and I joined him and we began our initiative to revitalize the team. There weren't many members at first, but we put a lot of effort into promoting the club. I created flyers to advertise the team through the mathematics club, and the professors had their own flyers to spread throughout the mathematics department. We set up activities in many events around campus, and most importantly, we did class visits, where the professors, the officers, and I went to individual classrooms to present and promote the team. The professors ran consistent meetings on Fridays at HFC to practice common questions that had a high chance of being on the test. Since there's only about three minutes on average per question, if you see a question that you've practiced before, you can solve it very quickly and use that extra time for the newer questions. And because of this, these practice sessions were not only good for getting old, newer students caught up, but also helping to hone the skills of returning students. The officers and I also hosted additional sessions for those who wanted extra help or those who couldn't make it to the Friday meetings. <laughs> I distinctly remember Jason and I sitting in the G building lobby tutoring students even up to minutes before the test began. <laughs> and not to mention, the professors would also communicate with us around the clock, 
create handouts for the Friday sessions, and also meet with students individually to help boost the skills of those who need it. Altogether, we work to maximize the amount of opportunities for students to prepare. As an example, I'd like to present a technique that Professor Zazulis taught us. That's actually quite applicable. For any question with variables in the answer, you can substitute any number for that variable and simplify things down without changing anything about the question, such as the nature of variables. When the professor taught this to us, he called it the birthday method, since when he showed us, he used a random student's birthday to show that any number could be substituted and it would, the technique would still work. But I prefer to call it the Zazili method to respect the one who taught the technique to us. But to keep everyone together, we needed to establish a strong means of communication. We started off with platforms like WhatsApp, but then we switched to Discord, and there we set up something pretty nice. The officers and I built in a forum of questions from the previous years for students to work on together and at their leisure. This gave them the flexibility to test their skills whenever it was most convenient for them. And it allowed future students to find help in the previous questions answered by students. We started off small, but with these efforts and more, they culminated in the most recent round, where our team at HFC has achieved something wonderful. We worked together and were able to achieve a score of 110.5. And this score has netted him for college high representation on the national stage. Now, the competition can be divided up into regions. We'll start in the central region. Let's say, hypothetically, our school competed in the central region instead of the Midwest. When we put our score up against all of the competing colleges in all of these states and provinces, not only did we beat them, we blew them out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> How about the mid-Atlantic region? It's it's higher, but still not close to our level. How about all of these states and provinces and all of these regions combined? We still outrank them all. And finally, our home region, the Midwest, against Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Wisconsin, and our home state, Michigan. Where do you think? Ooh, I almost spoiled the secret. Where do you <laughs> Where do you guys think we placed? <laughs> Let me give you all a hint. There we are. First in Michigan and first in the Midwest. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. In fact, if you look at all of the nations, all of the Colpeen colleges and all of the nation combined, in Ohio, in New York, in... <laughs> All of these places, in Wisconsin, man, all of these places, Texas, our score, you know, oh, actually, I didn't even mention, even some states, some colleges in Mexico and Canada, our score makes Michigan the second highest scoring state in the nation. Our team here at HFC is so talented, and I'd love to acknowledge those who worked alongside me to make this possible by inviting them up onto the stage. First, Tiana Aitani who helped us a lot with our question forums. <laughs> Suleiman Twile, an old timer with us. <laughs> Alice Sublini and Abigail Giro, two incredibly amazing newcomers who I can't wait to see more of. Jace Bauman Badalo, my right hand man, who, worked in, who did incredible work behind the scenes to make this all possible. Professor Sin, who introduced me to this team and is constantly helping to, to help us branch out into new avenues. And finally, Professor Zalzali, the original. With this incredible team, I wholeheartedly believe that we can go even further beyond than this one. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Oh. I can answer any questions you may have. Thank yes, you. Does anybody have any questions for Hattie?
Trustee Watts. Okay, clearly I am biased when we're talking about the team and what happened here in the state. Um, however, I am blown away by your presentation. And I will say, full transparency, I'm, her I'm not, math is okay. Like, but I'd rather be in front of a stage speaking with people and as a former teacher, that's where I feel most comfortable. But Hattie, what are you going to do particular after HFC? Oh. Um, I'm planning on, I have a bunch of schools I'm applying for. Hopefully, I want to transfer to UM Ann Arbor in order to pursue their robotics program. Okay, I ask this because if, you, if I had you as my instructor, I would have loved math. Because you are so engaging that I'm like, yes, give me more. Like, I'm writing down these formulas because I want to figure this out. So I want to say that, yes, robotics, but I also think that you have this natural talent to be extremely engaging, right? I think everyone here was extremely engaged. And I think if you can pursue that sort of math, but also share your energy with the younger students. And I think you're doing that here in this team. And I like seeing all of your teammates smiling during this presentation. So your professors, thank you so much. Um, and I'm just, I'm super excited and happy and so proud of you guys because I, this was just a great presentation and thank you for starting up the school, this year with this. So thank you and congratulations. I'm so <laughs> Trustee Mosib. Oh, I, I'm actually, I want to comment on oh, that. Oh, go ahead, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm flattered, right I'm, fla I'm extremely flattered, but I'm honored to, to serve this college. And, and I couldn't have done it, of course. Th this was a team effort. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have done it without the help of all these wonderful people. Well, you represented them all very well with your presentation. So yes, thank you everybody behind there, in front. Yes, everything. So thank you guys. Thank you. Trustee Moser? Yes. Um, my colleague asked you about your future. I want to ask you about the past. How did you get involved uh, first? How did you get in, in love with math and um, uh, what got you involved also in the math club in the beginning when you joined? And where did you go for school? Oh, um, I, I actually, it's funny. I, I started off technically here since I'm a student with the Henry Ford Early College. Okay. Um, so well, I, I, I was always kind of trying to like get out, put my foot in the door and try to do something. But um, I, I really wanted to pursue, actually I wanted to pursue uh, physics. But, and, and like part of that is I found the language of like mathematics. It's so incredible how you can like, s there's this universal language, right? And it's like, and it, it, that kind of baffled me that like there was the, kind of this like stigma about, about like people like, ah, oh, mathematics is kind of tough. It's, uh, when in reality, it should be quite the opposite. It's like the one language that everyone can communicate to each other with. So when Professor Sin reached out to me and gave me the chance, like gave me this platform to like share my love of this subject with everyone, of course I'm gonna take it. Anybody else? Hattie, I've always known that the mathematicians run the world. But with your personality and your public speaking, you scare me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share something with you. I recently posted, and before I found out you were doing this presentation, if you love math, I just recently ran into my middle school math teacher. And the post was, if you love math, there was a math teacher in your life that instilled the magic of numbers in you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Kosmowski, my math teacher at Salinas School, ran into him recently. And there was like over a hundred comments of students younger than me, older than me, saying Mr. Kosmowski, Mr. Kosmowski. So what you just picked up here from, uh, from your professors, that's something that's gonna carry you, your team, and everybody else here for a long time. So thank you for a great presentation. I came in here cold, freezing. Now you got me excited for this meeting. <laughs> Anybody else, any questions? Get to your class. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you. Next item, Madam Secretary. President's items. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate you identifying the officers. That's one of the few times that uh, I, I do get a little envious of the P-12. They get to have the election, and uh, I watched it, but my colleagues uh, are here now seeing for the first time the new officers of your board. I want to say welcome to all of the new officers, especially you, Mr. Chairman, who is 
regained the gavel. Um, I hope that this this year when we're serving together, uh, you get to be physically here more than last time. <laughs> you, you and I were on our couches uh, for a lot of these meetings uh, during 2020, and I just I really hope that um, it's not the case this year. Um, as m my colleagues will know, we traditionally have a passing of the gavel, and we have a photograph of that taking place, and what I call the team photo that is starting to become a little bit of a long series on the wall right out here. Uh, we'll be doing that in February, and part of that was uh, I, I, I wanted to make this uh, board meeting rather short. It's the beginning of the year, and uh, it's on a short week because of the holiday we celebrated yesterday. I didn't know I didn't know this, but I do know now know it. it's freezing outside. So uh, uh, my hope is to have you all uh, out of here and towards some place where it will be warmer uh, sooner as possible. But um, I, I do want to say congratulations to the officers of the board, the chair, the vice chair, uh, the secretary, and the treasurer. We we as a college look forward to working with you all again. And you. candidly, uh, all of you. Um, well, certainly the chair, the vice chair, and the secretary are, are in roles that they've either had before or um, that they had rec as recently as last year. So uh, we do have some continuity, and we're excited to work with you. Thank you. Uh, I do want to thank um, trustees for joining us at the State of the College, which was this <coughs> month. I believe I saw trustee at that time, Chair Thorpe, and trustee at that time, just trustee, Petlitschkoff. And I don't believe I saw any other trustees. I appreciate you being here. We had a good kickoff to the beginning of the, the school year. We're excited to be here. It was not freezing cold, so uh, it was comfortable to move around outside. And I did see a lot of students and uh, staff in that first week moving around, and I'm excited to be here with you all. One of the uh, things I said at the State of the College is, is a little bit of a bittersweet goodbye we're having from one of our teammates who's having his last board meeting with you all. Now, often you'll call Fred up to answer questions about the procurement that he's done during my tenure for six years and during his tenure for uh, almost 40 years. So uh, it, it will be my last item, but it will be one, as I mentioned, will be somewhat bittersweet to say that uh, I know Fred uh, has big, exciting plans for retirement, uh, and I, I venture a guess he might miss board meetings uh, at some <laughs> point. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but I will say, you know, this is this will also serve two purposes, Fred. It, because this is your last board meeting, maybe we'll go a little more easy on you uh, tonight. Um, but I, I, I'll just say, you know, running running the procurement of a college this size. I mean, it's a small town. It's a small town. Um, and for for as long as I remember, uh, until very recently, Fred did that work nearly on his own. And and I know when I got here, and I didn't know. Uh, about the procurement operation and whenever I got questions from trustees who often do their due diligence by asking me questions as is completely appropriate I became very very clear that I could go to Fred and not only would he be able to answer the question but he would somehow have this kind of encyclopedic knowledge of the things that were coming before you and on, uh, on the very few occasions and they were few but I do think this is the most important thing about Fred and his integrity and why we all trust and will miss him so much was on the few occasions he didn't know he had the self-confidence to say, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. And that's a, that's a, a character <clears throat> trait that is, is too rare, uh, but is extraordinarily powerful, especially in a position like his where we're trusting him to do the public's work in judging who has earned this institution's public monies. And it was, it was just uh, clear to me that when Fred said X, you knew X was the case, and if Fred didn't know what the answer was, he would come back and give you the right answer. So um, those are some big shoes to fill. Uh, we're working on ways to do that, and I'll have an announcement for the board uh, in the future. But um, we've got, what I, what I count, about two and a half weeks left before, before, before Fred will move on to um, Probably not greener pastures in the month of January or February, but um, but certainly I hope, uh, Fred, from, from me personally, I, I wish you the very best. You've given us decades of service. You've shown what it means to be a true public servant. You've been a good teammate to me personally. And uh, I just, I can't imagine that it's the case, but I can hope that some someone will fill your shoes for as long and is with such uh, great integrity and teamwork. So. Please, on behalf of this uh, entire college, and, uh, and I'll take the liberty of saying on behalf of this board, 
thank you for your service. And uh, this is your last board meeting. So um, if you get any questions, please, please don't, don't just throw your papers up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> thank, th it looks ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is all I have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Discussion items. Uh, 2024 mid-year budget adjustment board report number 4728 vice president Ted Setkowski uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know if you want a presentation on this we in the in the past We've sometimes done presentations. We've sometimes not you have a board report on the mid-year adjustment and it is uh, frankly a good a good mid-year adjustment and in addition you've got a, a budget update so I think the way I'd like to proceed with this is if, if trustees have questions, um, I've looked at this pretty closely with Vice President Satkowski, um, and uh, I can answer many of the questions, and if I, if I can't, he's, he's on standby. Of course, he's glowing after the football team played in, in uh, Houston. So, um, but, but aside from his glow, we're both ready to answer any questions you have about the mid-year adjustment. Okay. Are there any questions now, or just, do you want to just email President Cavaluna? Any questions now? Oh, it's fine. That's fine. It's fine with me. Uh, and then, Mr. Setkowski, um, did you, I can't remember, did you want to make a presentation on the TIF? We normally, uh, we normally leave that to the chair of the committee, which is Joe Zitnick, uh, who handles that, uh, about James, of course, before. Or Joe, Joe is. Oh, Joe's here. Oh, okay. Joe's the first one here. <laughs> but it's uh, either, either or. The details regarding the project are uh, in the packet. Uh, we have two hundred and thirty thousand dollars available to approve projects as a committee of a little over hundred thousand dollars. So there's money left over for the spring semester, including what we take in for the winter. So uh, they were all vetted. Uh, the committee met. No, I mean we we went over them pretty carefully, and uh, they we we thought they all wanted. They're they're all deserving. Uh, we, we're trying to get away from uh, just like rubber stamping some of the stuff that didn't really think that met the what it was uh, created for. So these these were all worthwhile. We Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I didn't mean to move to the next item before you wanted to, um, but it sounded like they did want to make a small presentation. Uh, <laughs> so you got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know we received the reports. Uh, they were emailed to us, and they're in front of you. Does anybody have any questions? Trustee Petrikoff? Um, Joe, I just have one question. Um, under the enrollment services, because everything else kind of details exactly what the monies are going towards... Um, technology wise this just kind of says we want to use technology and and kind of says laptops kind of thing and I'm not sure whether this funds these funds are strictly for laptops or some other expenses because it doesn't really detail it the way the other two yeah, I have a voice. I don't think I need to go to the podium <laughs> uh, but, uh, so it's a laptop and a charging card and it's so they can kind of take administrative services to different buildings and set up like little kiosk areas where students can come and they can provide services kind of mobile because especially in weather like this making a trek over to the welcome you know not something a lot of people would like to do especially if you're walking so the idea was to kind of set up a mobile system where they could go from place to place on campus and do the stuff that they do in a welcome center. okay all right thank you any other questions? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Next item, please. Next item, action item, citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who have submitted a blue card by 7, 10 p.m. to the secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to the comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or college employees. Please limit comments to three minutes. If during those three minutes the comments become personally directed, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant, your public comment time may be interrupted or ended. There are no zero blue cards. Thank you. Next. Next item. Are there any action items on this agenda which board members or the president wish to discuss, on, to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude them from the action items below. 
Move to approve action items numbered one through four. It's recommended in this agenda. So moved. <laughs> so was moved by Trustee Thorpe. Do support. we have support? Supported by Trustee McDonald. We'll go into discussion here. Uh, I know Trustee Moseb uh, has a question. Yes, on uh, this question, I've asked it before the meeting to President Kevaluna. <coughs> And I, I just wanted uh, <coughs> clarification since we approved um, a contract in February uh, of 2023 to Illusion Company um, for a total of 624000 if I may recall that number out of the top of my head. But um, I, I was asking uh, why we're engaging the company again and awarding them with a contract if we already made the purchase last year um, with that amount which included some um, advising so if, if you want to clarify that president Kevaluna. yeah thank you trustee mozip and i do appreciate you giving me a heads up on this um it's a great question and i um i know to never think you don't remember what you're spending money on uh, an entire year ago um so the, that, that larger contract was with this service provider for a software product that the team will be using to continue to try to revamp and, and skill up our academic advising unit, which is headed by uh, Vice President Gonko <coughs> and gen a woman named Jennifer Markin. That uh, contract, when you all approved it, was entered and it continues today and at that time, Henry Ford College was working with Aleutian to get that software up and running at Henry Ford College. And we had uh, one of our teammates serving as the point of contact and really the one doing most of the implementation work between Henry Ford College and Aleutian. And since your last board meeting, the, uh, that employee has, has, um, is not employed by the college and that, that that status change was rather abrupt and needed to be addressed in the process of how the college would continue to implement this software. And with the software, um, well, I'll just say this. The, the, Dr. Gonko engaged the uh, provider, Lucian, and evaluated different options, one being hiring a new person full-time at Henry Ford College, one being trying to make do with any other currently situated employees at Henry Ford College. And then the third option was to essentially uh, pay for more support uh, in, the, in the kind of human capital category from Aleutian. And that third category is what Dr. Gonko proposed to me and now I'm bringing to you as a proposal. And as uh, noted, it's a one-year contract that would um, give Henry Ford College what we hope would be the same amount of uh, human hours during the implementation that we uh, we had up until very recently with in-house support. Uh, I, I'm not ready to tell you if you do approve this. I'm not ready to say what our plan would be in in, in finding a long-term solution. Um, primarily because a lot of this work is implementation, and the hope would be that the implementation would not be in perpetuity. Uh, but also, I, I'll just say. Um, we're moving faster on this question than any of us would have preferred. Any other questions, Coach Moses? No. Yep. Okay. Uh, Are there any <laughs> other questions on any of the other action items? Okay. So are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none, please attach a unanimous vote in the affirmative. Uh, next item, please, Madam Secretary. Board of Trustees business acknowledgments of correspondence. <coughs> Uh, Madam Secretary, Mr. Chairman, um, Vice Chair Pelichkoff gave me a written correspondence that was addressed to her uh, at the college. And frankly, it's, it's a similar, um, it's a legal document that uh, I've given to the General Counsel's office. Um, and I, I think, Madam Multiple. Vice Chair, yeah, you've received this. Multiple times. Yeah, it is a demand for, for, for something. Yes. I, yeah, it, it was as my role as treasurer originally that started coming. Yeah, and so um, we, I'll just say, Mr. Chairman, this is a letter we've received multiple times, and I will uh, brief the board on anything that it needs to know about that correspondence after having a chance to talk with general counsel. Great, thank you. Next item, please. Board committee reports. I don't believe we have any. Uh, 
requests for information and or future agenda items. Next item. Mr. Chairman, if I yes. may, on, on that item, um, at our last meeting, or may have been the one before that, I can't remember, um, uh, the board asked for information about what our plans would be on the information side of the campaign for the millage renewal. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I've circulated that information to the board and uh, I invite any questions at any time on that. I'll also note that while um, we've been, we've, we've strictly adhered to employees of the college not doing advocacy while they're, while they're on the clock, so to speak, at the college, there is an advocacy campaign that um, some employees are taking part in, but they're doing so when they're not on the clock at the college, including myself. If I were to do advocacy, I would be taking annual leave. But that, that, um, that information I shared with you about what we're doing, that did not include the advocacy campaign. And if you have questions about that, um, one of the, the leaders of that is um, Dr. Eric Rader, who is um, a faculty member at the college. And um, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to make, make the board aware that uh, as I understood the question, I've reported back to the board and I invite questions. Okay, any questions? Great, thank you very much. Next item, please. Board member commentary. Next item, please. Future meeting dates. Monday, February 12th, 2024, P12 Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Fring Franchi Boardroom. Monday, February 19th, 2024, HFC Board of Trustees Policy Committee meeting, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Co Cabinet Conference Room. And Monday, February 19th, 2024, HFC Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference